Uh, hello out there. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here uh, for today's special event, the virtual launch of SUMA 2021, the McMaster School of the Arts graduate student exhibition, Quixotic. My name is Pamela Edmonds and I'm the senior curator at the McMaster Museum of Art. And I'm happy to be taking part in this end of year celebration with the School of the Fine Arts and all of the amazing emerging artists uh, who are, you know, celebrating their, um, yeah, their year end. And so for me, I'm speaking today, I'm in Hamilton, as many of you probably are, um, um, which is situated on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas and the Haudenosaunee. Uh, uh, lands put in under the dish with one spoon wampum agreement. And for me, I'm interested and want to express my gratitude to all the First Nation and Métis and Inuit people who have been taking care of this land since time immemorial and who continue to do so. And um, I'd also want to acknowledge the necessity of finding ways to join in support of decolonial and Indigenous movements for sovereignty and self-determination. Um, for me, I think determination is what one could say is an important characteristic of this year's graduating students, you know, completing your coursework alongside creating an incredible range of artistic work outside of your studios and your regular program, I can only imagine has been a challenge and I commend each and every one of you, um, you know, for your accomplishments, your perseverance, um, for, you know, <laughs> making it work and for completing and, and doing incredible work. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, this is now the second edition of SUMA that's being launched online instead of in the museum because of the lockdowns. And uh, again, the students and the curator rose to the occasion, not only in creating an incredible range of art, but also in how it's being presented. And this year, the students took it upon themselves to create a standalone website, which I'm sure will remain a wonderful archive of their work for years to come. Uh, there's a lot of brave work here uh, and the title of the show speaks to that, quixotic. It's an interesting term. I've, you know, something I, I've been exploring and thinking about. And it's one that is about being ambitiously idealistic. It represents the visionary and the fantastic. And it really, I think, uh, conveys an approach that's really needed to make art and present art in these days. So um, congratulations again in realizing your work with uh, ingenuity and through these adaptations. Thank you also to SODA, uh, to the faculty, to the MMA staff, uh, particularly uh, Elise Klinning, our communications officer for putting together our exhibition page on our newly launched rebranded website, which we're very proud of. Um, and of course, thank you to this year's curator, Alexis Moline, for working with the students, for curating the show, and to all the artists for sharing your thoughtful and inspiring art with all of us. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce Alexis, who's the curator of SUMA 2021 by reading her bio, and then we can get started. So Alexis Moline is a curator, writer, and researcher who has worked in Vancouver, Toronto, and Hamilton. She received her bachelor's degree in art history from McMaster University and her master in museum studies in collaboration with the sexual diversity studies program for the University of Toronto. And is currently the curator of the Building Cultural Legacies Project at the Hamilton's Arts, Hamilton Arts Council. Uh, so Alexis, um, Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about your process and how the show came together. Yes, yeah, so um, thank you so much to everyone for being here today um, and to the 
museum staff, Pamela and Elise, professors, Brianna and Judy, um, and all the wonderful students who have been so supportive during this um, challenging time of making art. Um, so what I wanted to say echoed a lot of the sentiments that Pamela just spoke about. Um, I was more than happy to take up the challenge of working with so many different artists working in so many different mediums to translate their work into an online space when I'm sure so many of them were betting on a physical space and that physicality to carry on a lot of their work. So I think we came up with some really great ways to honor their work and show it off to visitors to the websites. Uh, the students and I worked together to find ways to best display their work, be it with accompanying videos or GIFs, um, creating the artist talk videos for each of the 19 um, artists and to work on creating the independent website, which leaves so much um, more room for exploration to display their talents in all their different forms. Um, when I heard that the students had picked the theme of Quixotic, I was very interested and excited. Um, just as Pamela mentioned, it's such a great word. It just sounds great. And what it means is also amazing. Um, although each of these artists have had their own unique perspectives and approaches through their art throughout their time in the program, I felt that they all were able to find a way of tying what they were doing to the theme of Quixoticism in some way or another. So the ex Quixotic explores all that is deemed idealistic, starry-eyed, and practical. Um, and working and creating under such unusual circumstances, Quixoticism has seemed to become a way to liberate themselves in these challenging times and also deepen their practices in ways they might not have otherwise. Um, so I feel like this exhibition encapsulates the multiple ways that these artists have adapted, grown, and investigated the cruciality of art in difficult times. Um, and again, like Pamela said, the persistence and endurance of um, all of that. So some were working quixotically as they had to adapt to new, sto new studio spaces, which were just limited to their bedrooms. Um, some were quixotic in the themes that they explored in their work, such as environmental issues or reckoning with the past. Um, and, but they were all quixotic in their commitment to making art and staying focused on their ideas despite all that has been happening in the world. So it has been a pleasure working with so many wonderful young artists and getting to know them and how they think and operate. And I hope that the exhibition, the catalog, the student website and the artist talk videos leave all of you with much to explore, to think about and enjoy. Uh, wonderful. Thank you for that. I, yeah, Quixotic is such an interesting idea. And I, you know, I'm interested in hearing um, now and I'd like to introduce um, Judy Major Gerardin, who's on the faculty of uh, SODA, who will speak on behalf of the department and about, you know, her experience working with the students this year. Thanks, Pamela. I, I would also like to add uh, some words of thanks uh, because this is a celebration and it, it's time to acknowledge all the work that's gone into this exhibition over the year. Um, and first and foremost, congratulations and, and thanks to our student artists. Um, they've really weathered an unprecedented year of challenges to complete their BFA degree. And you know we've all talked about the pandemic and the challenges there, but really you, you wouldn't be at this level of achievement if you, you weren't very self-sufficient, resourceful and creative people. And those are the skills that are gonna take you into the future. So it's, it's interesting how these challenges sometimes pull out skills that we might not otherwise have developed to the same degree. So, you know, turning challenges into opportunities, it's really at the core of artistic practice. I don't know of any other class, I know this is not the first SUMA online, but to do so much of their work in a virtual kind of uh, environment, um, you really have, are unprecedented in, in moving through the year in that way and having to problem solve and really think of alternative ways of of thinking of your practice and of getting your work done. So I do hope you feel a great sense of pride in what you've achieved um, and in how you've supported each other through this, which is also very important, the network that you've established. 
I'd also like to thank the McMaster Museum of Art for their ongoing support and their engagement with our program and our students. It, it's not only this culminating exhibition, um, but also the museum programming exhibitions and collecting that enrich student experience over the four years of their, of their studies. Um, the museum is a welcoming space for students, staff, faculty, and community members. And the Summa Show really provides a high, high level professional experience to our graduates and an opportunity to work with professional staff and a community curator, which is really a great launch pad for moving then transitioning out into their communities. Uh, we thank all the McMaster Museum of Art staff, but particularly I'd like to thank senior curator Pamela Edmonds and communication officer Elise Klinning, and also our, of course, our guest curator Alexis Moline for, for the care and time that they've put into us and also the expertise that they've contributed, which has been then passed on um, to our students who have learned from working with them. The students have worked collaboratively over the year to um, oversee many tasks associated with the exhibition. If you're not involved in, in putting up art on a regular basis, you, you're probably not really aware of all of the things that go on behind the scenes. And I, I'd like to thank Professor Carmela Laganzi and Brianna Palmer for guiding all of the teams, the design team, copy, ed copy editing team, photography team, photo editing team, communications team, accessibility team, and the project management team. All of these teams of small groups of students have worked over the year to bring this work together. I'd also like to thank Adrian Grossman, who worked with me this year in supervising the advanced studio practice and criticism course. And we worked in tandem with Brianna Palmer's third year course, where we bring both those levels of students together in critiques and discussions. Also, um, we rely very heavily on our instructional assistants, Troy Coulterman and Angela Busse. Even though we weren't in the studio, they provided a lot of assistance to students throughout the year. And, and I also would like to um, thank Tiba Basil for, for her outstanding student leadership this year in, in really sort of taking a leading role and spearheading a lot of pulling together a lot of the loose threads, which there are always many of them in, in big projects like this. Uh, so lastly, just to close, uh, thanks to family and friends and the audience for being here, for believing in these emerging artists and in the value of what they do. And we hope you will spend time with the exhibition after this launch and really explore and learn more about each of these amazing students. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Uh, I also want to echo um, what you said about uh, Tiba being a true leader, you know, um, who really has pushed for making this um, exhibition a special event. And, um, you know, having someone with, I say, her vision and her, um, you know, ability to uh, see, you know, the vision really. I mean, that's, I think what making art is about. It's not easy <laughs> to do. And, you know, um, someone like yourself, I think is also to be commended um, for taking it upon, you know, working with the students, but taking it, uh, you know, upon, um, yourself with others to present the show and and to do the work uh, to present the exhibition in its best light and so I'd like to you know introduce you to say a few words about and walk us through the amazing website that is part of SUMA 2021. Okay hi everyone uh, my name is Tiba Faisal. I'm one of the students, uh, the graduating students. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is a really emotional time for me. Uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction, everyone, for the kind words. Um, so yeah, I'd like to first uh, kind of talk about what our vision was um, going into um, really an online exhibition, uh, which was a really um, new uh, direction uh, for the program. Uh, 
you know, given the time. So we wanted to make an exhibition that kind of showcases everyone's uh, amazing work and, um, um, you know, give everyone like a spotlight basically to uh, showcase their work, showcase what they're all about. And um, um, and then we also wanted to showcase like the, ca the catalog that everyone worked on, um, the amazing team, uh, the teams that uh, Judy had mentioned work very closely to make that catalog very beautiful um, and very coherent. So I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go through the uh, website together. Give me a second. So I hope everyone can see my screen very well. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so this is the front of our website. The front of our website, we really wanted it to be um, a very quick uh like explanation about like the entirety of the of the project what quixotic was all about um we have here uh, a really nice written um uh sentence by one of our project manager uh um aaron um and yeah this is like the explanation with quixotic because we all know that this is an, a new word for everyone and not many even of us really um knew the word but it fits so well into the times that we're making art in. Um, then down here, we just have our, our beautiful and really, really amazing curator uh, in her statement. Um, and then down here, we just wanted to showcase our um, Instagram, which really helped us through the, uh, through the year to um, share um, everything that's going on and a lot of like amazing, like um, Instagram takeovers took place there uh, where all the artists, um, took a few days to talk about their practice um, and so on. Um, so then um, we go into like the artist page. So we have two buttons right here just for quick access, which is like to go view our artist uh, page and then also to view our catalog. This is just like really helpful in, um, yeah, for like quick access to the pages, the mo two most important pages. So we go down here and we have all the, pages of the artists um, and you know when you click on one of them you have their like centerpieces their art statements um, their um, their artist talk that was um, uh, taken and edited uh, by a um, video editor um, and then you know the biography and how you can contact them uh, you can contact the artists they might have provided either their Instagram, their email, or um, a website. Um, so yeah, feel free to, um, if you are interested in the artists and to get to know them better, to contact them. And then last but not least, we just have our catalog. Um, our catalog is, view, view in here, is viewed here as a digital copy, um, and you can just like flip through it. However, we also have uh, two options for the cat for the catalog. You can either download it and just have like a free PDF of it. Um, and then we also have um, a pre-order option. Uh, and the pre-order option will just take you to this Google um, form where you can, you know, order, uh, like just put in your name, your email, and how you'd like to receive it and how many copies you'd like. Um, and yeah. Um, I think that is all. Um, I, I, you know, this website was a really, really fun um, thing to make, especially um, after the catalog, because uh, that's what we started first, and then we did the uh, website, and it worked just coherently um, with the vision that we had built, um, um, like during we, when we made the catalog. Um, I do want to give just a few shout outs, uh, first of all, to Evelyn Vaughn. Evelyn was the amazing artist who made our um, our logo right here. Um, she's really wonderful and her practice really um, shines in this logo very well. And I encourage folks to like view all the artists, but you know, Evelyn really put in her thumb into the, uh, to the logo. Um, very well. Um, and then lastly, I'd also love to give a shout out to my partner who's sitting right here behind me. He's the amazing software developer who um, helped us make this, um, uh, you know, this whole thing really a reality. Um, and yeah, and I'd like to encourage you also to 
go visit the McMaster Museum of Arts um, page that they made for us um, to view the art to view the artists, and I'm sure. Um, um, Pamela will talk a little bit about that too. Um, but yeah, um, thank you everyone for being here. And yeah, this is a wonderful time and really weird time to be making art, but really wonderful. And yeah, thank you everyone for the support and all that. Thanks. Thank you, Tiba. It's amazing to see, and I love the logo. I think it's incredible. Um, and so every year we also have and announce three awards. So there's a curator's award, there's a faculty award, and then there's also a people's choice award and special recognition of those students who have made exceptional strides in their work. And so um, we're gonna have Alexis um, announce the curator's award, and then we're going to play the artist talk um, video in in correspondence with that i wish we could play them all because they're all so amazing um but we will play um following uh, alexis's announcement um the the winner's um video so over to you alexis thank you uh, thank you everyone um it as I'm sure everyone says this, but it was a hard choice to pick just one, but I am happy to present um, Juliana Bernacki with the award for curator's choice. <laughs> Congratulations, Juliana. Um, so during my time working with Juliana, I had seen a, a great commitment to growth and exploration and a deep wish to, to learn more um, different angles and different ways of looking at their own work and ways to deepen their practice, both in theme and in materiality. So during our one-on-one -on -one conversations that we've had throughout um, the past two semesters now, um, Juliana has been very curious and questioning. And um, we had really great discussions on her interest in the domestic, private spaces and um, perception and the uncanniness of the lives of others. Um, Juliana has pushed herself to work in different mediums to further her interest in these themes, working now with a combination of painting and hand needle punched rugs. And I am excited, excited to see how her work develops even more now that she's graduated. So congratulations, Juliana. Roll the clip. <laughs> Hi, my name is Juliana Bernacki, and I'm an artist from a small town in Niagara called Welland. As doing my final year online during a pandemic has been challenging and definitely a learning curve, it has also taught me how to adapt my practice and make it more accessible. I've always had two main interests in art, which are painting and textiles. And for a long time, I've been struggling on how to combine these two things, how to combine my passion for painting and this natural draw I have towards painting and this fascination with textiles and that really tactile, small, tedious work. And I think finally with my work this year, I have come to a conclusion on how to bring these two things together. My current work combines painting and needle punched rugs. Earlier this year, I taught myself how to needle punch with a little bit of help from YouTube and I completely fell in love with the process. I also just visually love the result of these rugs when they're finished and how combined with my paintings, they create an almost dysfunctional diptych. Conceptually, my work revolves around themes of image and how people present themselves, voyeurism, and making private spaces public. How we are perceived and how we perceive others make up a lot of our lives. I'm interested in deconstructing these feelings into ambiguous spaces that also seem personal. Spaces that simultaneously feel familiar as they do unknown. I hope this short artist talk gave you a little bit more insight into my work. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to go onto my website and send me an email or reach out to me on Instagram and send me a DM. Thank you.
Congratulations, Juliana. And so now I'd like to introduce Brianna Palmer, who will announce this year's faculty award. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And um, just like Alexa said, it's 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 a such a hard decision. And even though we have four years to kind of think about our decision, it's <laughs> um, we we watch these students grow from their first uh, you know, semester and all the way to their last. And it's always such a, a bittersweet goodbye. Um, and, and, it's, and it's wonderful to see the, the students, all of them progress and they, they're, they're all challenging themselves. And so in that respect, you know, if we could give the award to everyone, we would love to. And the one student that we, we, we chose um, this year was really thinking about the materiality of their practice and how that was the really grounding foundation throughout the whole four years that every time um, the, the concepts kind of grew out of the material and, and their, their focus and their drive just to learn as many different processes as possible and really, really kind of hone those skills. And so uh, walking in, um, you know, year after year and seeing them through critique, we could just, you know, I was always floored at these fantastic um, pieces that they would create with just learning a new technique. So um, this year, uh, we would like to present the faculty award to Linda Dong. Um, yay! And so I guess, as Alexa says, we could roll the clip. Congratulations, Linda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh my god, I have a saw that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda. I'm studying in McMaster University Art Program. I have been keeping interest in many material. My art parties involve combining everyday objects with different material. For example, the works like Borg. Egg are considered a symbol of vegetarian, and the diamonds are the most hardest nature oil. The combination makes the egg hard from the inside from the initial cheap and fragile to hard and precious. The egg are being given a new definition here. During the pandemic, we could not back to school. So I start build my own studio at home, including converting the garage into a workshop and the basement corner in an indoor studio. Working remotely has also made me rethink the various forms of arts. I try to add more multimedia elements in my work, such as combining art and video. The Sunday breakfast is a challenge to the combination of digital multimedia and uh, traditional arts. Congratulations, uh, Linda, again. And so I just want to let remind everyone that all of the artist talk videos are available to view at your leisure. You can watch them many times over um, on the museum's exhibition website. Um, also they're uh, on our uh, YouTube channel and also on the students um, exhibition website, all wonderfully made and insightful. And so, um, Last but certainly not least, I'd again like to let people know that there's a chance and opportunity for you to vote for and support your personal choice of artists for an award. So you can go to the museum's exhibition website um, on the show page and vote uh, by May 28th. So you have a month or so uh, and we'll announce the winner on May 29th. So, you know, spend some time with the sites, uh, enjoy the talents of this year's artists who are all winners um, and, and uh, make the choice and we'll announce that. And so we're, we're a little early. So we were trying to figure out if we got through everything um, early, whether folks are interested in, uh, you know, maybe a bit of Q and A or if there's any questions from maybe the curator or faculty um we can open that up right now um so we can keep an eye on the chat otherwise 
we can sign off. <laughs> and if the graduates want to um, share any highlights of their four years at McMaster. Definitely staying up until 4 a.m. for local painting <laughs> class in second year. That was that was definitely the highlight. Best night ever. Staying up until like in the studios until like the security guards came to kick us out and then we came back and then Taylor did a face mask. It was amazing. It was like people were ordering food. We were playing Avril Lavigne. Definitely the highlight. Was, like that class, even though it was very painful. I think um, all late night studio anything was just some of the best memories because we were all just so tired, but we were all just so happy just working together. It was just, those are probably some of the memories we'll cherish the most, I think. Anyone else? Um, I just want to thank all my professors. Um, I came in very last minute and I'm just like so grateful to everyone for bringing me in and uh, making me feel a part of the program. Probably definitely the highlight of my entire BFA was spent at Mac, so thank you. I think I want to say something. Um... Um, I am one of the first people in my family that um, has got a degree and it was really lovely to, I transferred from a different institution and my master made me feel really welcome and our department was um, like it was like a family sort of in a way, you knew everyone by, by the first week and I don't know, I just, I'm really happy that I finished my undergrad at a Mac. So it made me feel really at, like at home in a way. Going to the studio was like my second home. Hi, I also just wanted to say thank you um, to all the teachers and the curators for your help over the last few years. It's meant a lot, so thank you guys. And to everyone in the program for all of our hard work. The show's awesome. So congrats, guys. Well, congratulations again, everyone. Uh, you know, if anyone else has wants to contribute, otherwise, you know, we um, appreciate your support uh it's you know again uh a difficult time but you know i think uh being an artist is a privilege and uh you know artists are important to to our you know to our world <laughs> to our existence so uh you know, I hope that you all have a, a you know, a, a great and prosperous journey in your, in your making and creating and uh, congratulations again in all of your work. And um, shall we sign off? <laughs> you know, all the best everyone. Uh, and we'll announce the people's choice. And again, uh, you know, enjoy the websites, enjoy the work, and uh, congratulations, everybody. All right, take care. Bye.